Okay, today we are going over the BAC855 controller upgrade kit that we've been developing. Let's do it. So this is the kit. It includes a controller and mounting bracket, a new display, and a custom wire harness that'll plug directly into your stock bike. This kit is intended to work with your stock battery and motor. It allows you to choose your power levels, but the highest level will outperform your stock bike. So what we do is we're custom tuning the firmware that goes inside this controller. That's how we're getting peak performance from these stock parts. And if you choose to upgrade your vehicle in the future, we'll have new firmware to accompany your upgrade path. The controller always stays the same and upgrades with you when you need it. So talking about powertrain mods, let's split this up between riding and protection. Riding has to do with everything that we're gonna interface with, everything we're gonna touch. Protection is everything that happens in the back end, everything that happens invisible to me as a rider, um, but is actually really critical for this riding part to work seamlessly. To ride, you're gonna turn the battery on, and then you're gonna turn the display on. When the display powers up, you'll see the power meter on the left, battery readout on the right, and speed readout in the middle. Now, the display is important because this is also how we choose modes. You're not gonna use an app anymore. Your riding modes are chosen through the display now. Mode one is essentially a class one e-bike. It's a 750 watt max output with a max speed of 20 miles per hour. Mode two is a class three e-bike. It's a 1200 watt max with a 28 mile per hour speed limit. And mode three, mode three is your unlimited mode. It's your off-road only mode. It's not street legal or bike path legal, but it pulls the max output from your battery and delivers it to the motor. So for this kit right now, it's outputting 2,500 watts and is limited to about 35 miles per hour. Okay, one last note on riding features real quick before we move on to protections. We do not support lights yet, and here's why. In some manufacturers' bikes, this communication between the controller and your lights is sometimes proprietary. And because all of these guys in a stock bike are communicating on a proprietary interface that we're replacing, we can't just piggyback into the lights. So in a lot of the cases, that's why this controller does not support lights. We can't get into the proprietary system without getting in trouble. Okay, now we're gonna talk about protections. The purpose of a protection is to operate invisibly in the background, but it's to protect all of your components. And what happens most of the time is we'll reduce power first when we're approaching a dangerous limit for something, and then we need to cut power when we get past a dangerous limit. So this is the system that we interface with. Now let's look at the protections of this system. First off is the one that everybody knows. This is your low voltage cutoff. This is to protect the battery from over discharging. For lithium ion batteries, if you take it below a certain level, then it's gonna permanently damage those cells. You can't use them again. So at the very basic level, we need to have a low voltage cutoff. Another thing we need to protect for is the current being requested from the battery. Again, this is a stock battery, right? And it's got a BMS inside that's also proprietary. We can't talk to it, we can't modify it. So instead of trying to do that, we're limiting the controller from pulling too much current to trip anything in the battery. And lastly is the temperature cutoff for the battery. There's a safe temperature that batteries can be at, and if it's above or below this safe operating temperature, then the battery shouldn't be outputting anything. Again, this is a proprietary battery. It's got its own BMS in there, and without hacking into it, we're not gonna change anything. So it's in parentheses here because we're just letting the battery manage its own temperatures here. So for the motor, the one thing we really care about is the temperature that it's operating at. It can't go above a certain operating temperature, otherwise you're gonna start melting your windings, you're gonna start demagnetizing the little magnets in your rotor. So we don't wanna let the motor get above a certain temperature. The motor outputs a temperature reading and we have to program in a whole matrix to make sure that we have an accurate temperature reading from the motor and we're gonna start dialing back power if you approach that limit. And finally, we do care about the brake cutoffs. This is a stock feature that exists on most bikes is when you pull the brakes, then you're not gonna actually put any power down towards the motor. 
We carried that over so the brake sensors can still be connected if you have the stock brakes and they'll work exactly like before. But as always, you can disconnect them and the system will still work without the cutoffs. Now, of course, this is a simplified view, right? Every single one of these guys has maybe five or 10 different parameters that we need to program and we need to research and test to make sure that they're gonna work without you noticing. Okay, that's it. We've gone over how the system rides and then we went over how the system invisibly protects everything in the back end. So before we finish up, let's just see some riding footage and call it a day.